Hey guys, welcome to the little intro section we have here at the beginning of every hate cast. This time we bring you a Q&A. Jamie and I go over uh, all of your burning questions, and if you have any more for a future Q&A, please leave them in the comments section below. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Welcome to the newest hate cast and this time we're bringing you a Q&A, a question and answer where you ask your most fucked up questions or most relevant questions, either or, and we answer them. So, yo, yo, with that, yo, with that being said, I'm joined by Jamie Lewis. He's already uh, that spoken. is your other say. Uh, that's that's your other saying on top of uh, it'll be all right. With that being said is definitely something you say at least five times a podcast. Yeah, well, hey, everyone has their thing. Well, with that with being said, let's start this uh, Q&A. Yeah, I'll let you say it now. Uh, <laughs> with reference to the eye exercises you guys do, uh, would you guys do an article on weird and wonderful ways to build up muscles not associated with the typical gym? Uh, I don't know what he meant by that, but I'm guessing uh, like stuff you can use outside the gym. So There was a... Uh... I remember reading an article about face exercises somebody used to do. That I think it was Jack Lane actually did a bunch of face exercises. I can look and see what what's out there. Okay, is that something that you think you can? Uh, if if there's a lot out there, you think you can deliver that? Uh yeah, I'll give it a shot. Okay. Second one. Now this one might be uh, on a little bit longer. What do you guys think about intermittent fasting? Go mad. Water fasting. Dry fasting, day long fast, etc. And I'm going to add a bonus here, Ramadan. So Ramadan and ding dong. Yeah. So first, let's let's cover intermittent fasting. What are your what are your thoughts on it? Garbage. You know, I think it's a good way for like time management. But other than that, eh. I it's, I'm too it's hungry. It's making all something the time. out of nothing. I it, it really like it's taking something that most people who aren't fat pieces of shit do anyway, and then trying to make it into some sort of scientific method for, like, making yourself into a superhuman. All of which is stupid. Also, what the fuck ever happened to Martin Berkman? Is he dead? I have no clue. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Well, he's the one who came up with that shit, and uh, he... I don't think he's updated his web... Because I went there... I went to his website the other day... I was freaking out about something. I, I'm basically, I'm just, I'm writing an article shitting, and when I say shitting, I mean I am, like, taking Unloading. a. Oh no! It's like, <laughs> it's like I am taking a baby and filling it full of Indian food for like six weeks, and then feeding it a bunch of laxatives, and just walking up to people like Mike Gisretel and Mike Tusher, and just squeezing that baby's stomach in their face, and just spraying shit all over them. Because uh, that whole genetic uh, limit to how much muscle a person can build, not only can I crush it with anecdotal evidence, which is extraordinarily simple to do, but there is a study in <coughs> Japan that shows very definitively that all of the people that they use for those fucking genetic limit, and also, holy shit, if these guys could find a smaller sample size... That'd be awesome. I mean, really? Like, the whole fucking... The whole concept that they have is predicated upon, like, 20 guys who won the fucking Mr. Universe 50 years ago. Right. That's it. That's all they got. I mean, quite honestly, they need to suck start a Glock. Like, they are bad people, and I'm just... I am declaring fucking war on uh, evidence-based training shit. All those people need to fucking die. All their fans need to fucking die. Uh, and uh, I got a lot of fedrin in me right now. It's okay. Uh, so intermittent <laughs> fasting. Yes. Uh, so intermittent fasting. I looked up Martin Burke, and his uh, his website hasn't been updated in like seven years. Okay. I did write an article years ago about the utility of a fast in conjunction with um in conjunction with um 
like getting, making weight and then uh, doing a recomposition and right. like how right. how your body just sucks up nutrients from that fast. Um, I think it's useful for that. But otherwise, I, I, I see absolutely no reason to do a fast. And for anybody out there who thinks fasting is a great idea, there's a book called Hunger. I'll look up the author's name. Uh, you can actually email her. She's a, she's a great lady. And uh, it, it goes into exactly how insane fasting makes you. Well, another thing, too, is I think that it's important for everybody to remain in a fed state for as long as possible in their lifetime, just for general health. I... Um, I'm not really quite sold on the benefits of these extreme fasts. Like, I know there's water fasting. You know, there's there's people that do water fast for, like, 30 days. And it's like, what is wrong with you? I couldn't, I, I, you know, at that point, why don't you just take a shotgun and pull the trigger? I don't know why you would do that. Uh, except for the fact that most of these people doing water fast tend to be, like, you know, 100 pounds, 200 pounds overweight. And, of course, they're going to lose weight on a water fast. But even in that case, do a protein-sparing modified fast. Don't – there's absolutely no reason to just – I mean, yeah, I guess – like, you know Tano, right? Yeah, you know Tano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tano was experimenting with fasting, and he – I kept telling him, I was like, there's no fucking reason for you to do what you're doing. And he was just doing it just to be an asshole to his body and see how tough he could be. Right. Uh, if if that's your goal, I guess fine. Fuck it. Do whatever you want. But uh, there's there's no reason. I think fasting too is a tool that people use as an excuse to binge. Uh, you know, so the that's an interesting industry, idea. Well, the fitness industry is full of people that just have are just riddled with eating disorders. Like their relationship with food is just fucking bad, right? And when it comes down to it, it's like, okay, I'm going to fast for 12 hours so I can get absolutely fucking wasted on food for, you know, whatever. Like, it's, it's a borderline eating disorder. I can tell you people that do intermittent fasting when it comes to people like uh, Terry Crews and uh, The Rock or whatever. Like, they're, they're fucking busier than you are. That's why they do it. They don't do it because they want to, they don't want to fast, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. They don't want to fast at 4 o'clock in the morning all the way to 10 o'clock in the morning when they get a lunch break, right? I'm sure they don't want to do that. They do it because it's fucking necessary for their employment. You act, also, you're Terry on photo Cruz shoots. is a fucking mutant. Like, you just, that is true, yeah. I, that guy, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. The man is built like a brick shit house, doing probably the lamest uh, pro, like routine I've ever seen in my entire life. And like, he's addicted to porn, so that's another plus for him. Is he? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah yeah. He quit porn to make his uh to make his uh relationship with his wife stronger. That's how addicted he was, apparently, quote unquote. So, I think he was just ba- dating a frigid cunt who uh, hates porn because it makes people want to fuck. That's his wife. That's been his wife for like twenty years. So possibly. But <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that the luster probably wears off after a little while. That's where porn comes in and can make your relationship better. But some women are just so self-conscious. I think that they, you know, they see chicks with bolt-on tits and they, they don't see them as like, I mean, they're basically just like living fuck dolls. It's not like anybody's going to date those women. Yeah, but isn't it just like a movie? Like you, you don't want to actually live in Lord of the Rings. Like you just enjoy it. Right, it's like a movie. It's it's not. It's, I'm sorry. F- yeah, fucking... I mean, it's not. It's not like you're gonna run out and pull a fucking drive by because you watched Boys in the Hood, but you maybe you want to live a little <laughs> vicariously through that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's like, you know, especially you know, females think that you know if if that's what you want, like you're disconnected from them because you you find them attractive or whatever. No, it's it's like it's eye candy. You know, it's eye candy. That's it. That's, that's uh, yeah, as I mean, simple as that. Uh, and people like looking at things that they that they like the look of. I, I mean, it's just uh, that's just a natural thing. And if and, you I think mean, of that's, life, that's not to say that I wouldn't like immediately marry Bonnie Rotten if I had the opportunity, because I certainly be would. And I'm not trying to denigrate porn stars, but like, oh hell no, you're doing God's work. No, well, no, no. When I, what I said earlier about nobody's going to date them, it's not like anybody's actually tr- running out there and trying to date them. I mean, I've dated chicks who have been in porn or done prostitution, and like, 
one of them who was a, a prostitution was her avocation. She was a uh, school teacher by day, which was, uh, that was interesting. But uh, she was actually the first person who had me try Coke, too. She's, uh, she's, she's doing Lord's work for the children out there. Yeah. Doing it for the kids. Don't but, uh, like, yeah, they, I'm, they're great people. But, um, but I don't think, on average, it's, it's not like anybody's looking at the people in porn as people. Mm-hmm. They're looking at them as objects. Yeah, it's and it's it's like this. If if you want to think of God, if you want to think of like a Family Guy skit, right? Uh, you know, it it would be just like that. It's like I saw a chick with fake tits. Oh, I'm leaving you. It's like, what the fuck? That doesn't fuck. Happen. Yeah, it doesn't make any fuck. <laughs> oh, by the way, the uh, the author's name for Hunger and Unnatural History is Sharman Apt Russell, and I got in touch with her through Goodreads. So. Uh, if you guys want to read a book about hunger and about uh, fasting, she talks about all the crazy fasting studies that have been done. Talks about Gandhi. Um, right, right. She talks about that one Minnesota um, study that was done. I don't know if you're aware of that one, but it uh, it was trying to figure out how best to refeed people after they had been in like a Holocaust, basically, uh, right. because they had real hard time getting people refed after the Holocaust, and. Um, uh, so everybody in the in the study went insane, and most of them killed themselves, as I recall. And also another thing, guys, if you look at um, if you look at people who are actually starving, like from a standpoint of you know they have had a lack of food for a long period of time, they don't have abs; they have a pot belly. That's because that's one of the mechanisms. And I'm not saying that by going on a 24-hour fast or whatever. I'm talking about these people have been starving for months, you know, or at least uh, chronically under-eating, almost like uh, how anorexics get a little bit of a pot belly, right? Um, so when it comes down to it, like, I think the benefits of fasting are massively overblown. Uh, there is some evidence to suggest that fasting every once in a while is f- like good for you or whatever, but I just I, I I am more of a fan of people staying in a fed state for the majority of their life. I don't know. Especially if your goal is trying to be muscular, because like we were saying, right. not everybody's fucking Terry Crews. I mean, say for instance, you don't think that Terry Crews is biologically different than the average person. Uh, then just go ahead and look at yourself in the mirror and say, uh, am I ripped to the fucking bone to the point where you can see my pancreas secreting insulin uh, while simultaneously being perhaps one of the funniest comedic actors on the planet and capable of carrying an action movie on their own, on your own. If you are, then by all means, uh, follow Terry Crews' example. Otherwise, and, for- and he stays lean, and he has extremely good cognitive abilities too, which is something that a lot of people who stay that lean year round don't usually have. Really? So, I never yeah. had any problem with uh, with maintaining cognition while lean. Yeah, but he stays in like the seven to eight percent body fat range. Yeah, I I had veins on my abs for like four years. Never ever had a problem. Remembering things. A lot of people do. A lot, well, it's not... Uh, a lot of people have problems concentrating when they're that lean, right? Ah. So, like, I- any task that you have in front of you is going to get done, like, tomorrow or three days from now. It's it's incredibly hard to... to cause you just Your body just fights you staying that lean, right? It I does never, kind of... I, I, this, this is the first I've ever heard of it. I've never, never heard of such a thing. Yes, it does. Um... It's just a mechanism, you know, like, a, it's kind of an evolutionary mechanism when it comes to famines and stuff like that. Like, you, everything... Yeah, I guess your brain does... Well, see, I think you and I are talking about two different things here. Because you're talking about uh, being in a caloric deficit, I think. Whereas All I'm talking... All the time, yes. Like, yes. See, I wasn't in a caloric deficit. I think that's the issue. I, I, was, I was eating, like, 6,000 calories a day. It was just all meat. Right. No, and so. I... I I get that. I get if if you're in a surplus, man, your body's firing on all all cylinders. Like if you, even if you're at like uh, uh like maintain like maintenance, I guess. But I don't believe in a true maintenance. Um, but if you're at a maintenance, like your body's firing all c- cylinders. But if you just stay in a calorie deficit for you know six months, seven months, you're just going to be a complete and utter dog shit. Uh, when it comes to your abilities, so. 
But with that being said, um, that's what I think about fasting and dry fast with absolutely nothing. I don't even know nothing. what the fuck a dry fast is. No water, no food. Is what it is. Huh. I, I, I don't exactly know if that's healthy for a long period of time. I would not suggest it. So, um, you know, I, I, again, not a big fan of, of being in that hunger state. And dehydration is just fucking stupid. Don't do it. Unless you're trying to make weight, of course, but blah, 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 you know, whatever. But, um, also, Go Mad, we can cover that real quick. I think when Go Mad came out, uh, I mean, I could be, I, I'd, I'd, have to, I'd have to Google it quickly, but I think when Go Mad was introduced, not all milk was homogenized and pasteurized, um, so people were able to get raw milk far more easily. I think raw milk would probably be a much easier Go Mad than, uh, than using homogenized and pasteurized milk. I, I really don't think people digest it very well, and I think in massive quantities, it's probably incredibly stressful on your digestive tract. Well, see, everything in the fitness uh, realm, right, is, is cyclical, right? So GoMad became popular, then went out of, uh, out of popular, then it came back popular again, right? When people mm -hmm. tried to gain weight, high schoolers, you know, it always comes back to, like, your bros, like, 18 years old, sitting there saying, I need to gain weight, I'm, like, a buck 20. It's like, okay, well, go mad. You know, it's something everybody suggested for, for a while. You know, like old coaches know about it, all that stuff. Um, one of the issues is um, back in the day when Go Mad was uh, thought of, I, I truly do think that it was a way to just quantify more food, right? Um, just an easy way because, you know, milk used to be a lot cheaper, uh, all that stuff. Um, so it was, it was easily accessible for everybody basically to get so gallon of milk a day you know uh nowadays um i'm i'm actually still if you can if you can tolerate dairy like very very well go for it but it it wrecks man it's gonna make you so gassy <laughs> and i just don't yeah, and i, I think that's bloated. back to the homogenization and the pasteurization because uh homogenization breaks down the uh the fat molecules into something that just passes really easily through your uh the lining of your colon, as I recall. Now, and, I wouldn't say avoid milk. Just a gallon seems excessive, though. And I think the there it changes the protein, the structure of the protein molecule as well. But um, so it just it just is stressful on your digestive tract. But like like you were saying, it is it's an it's a good way to add calories to your diet. And I mean, shit, like all the guys I've recently written about, fucking drank, you know, gallons of milk a day. So, yeah. uh. It clearly has worked for people in the past. Um, if you listen to any fucking Redditor, uh, they will just screech about how they got so fucking fat on it. But I, uh, this is something that I just discovered. That uh, well, I mean, I knew it, but I didn't have any scientific evidence for it. But um, whenever they do a study on people gaining weight, right, uh, like muscular body weight, uh, those studies are generally done on detrained people who typically hold a decent amount of body fat anyway. Right. Um, you, they've basically trained their body to store body fat. If you've trained your body to build lean muscle, uh, you will actually put on less fat than you right. would otherwise. Um, and so it's, it's basically how fat are you right now? If you go on a dirty bulk right now and you're already a fat ass, you're just going to be a sloppy piece of shit, which describes every person on Reddit. So... Uh, God forbid, I, I'm probably going to get swatted now. But uh, Don't worry about God it. God damn. I hope all those it. fucking kids get AIDS. They uh, like they literally bitch about that porn in my blog. Like, I, I did, They must be born-again Christians or something. They're like, I'd rather read like the worst articles oh out of God. men's health rather than have to look at one video, one gif of a woman getting blowing a horse. It's like, well, number one, who doesn't want to look at a gif of a woman blowing a horse? And two, if porn is that upsetting to you, you got real problems. Also, just get off the internet. <laughs> yeah. The majority of the internet is porn. Trust That's, me. Yes. Yeah. Just like they so. said in Avenue Q, the internet is for porn. And, and that kind of leads us. I mean, well, I'm going to touch more on this GoMad real quick, very quickly. Uh, there's better ways of getting a massive amount of calories, too. Like, everybody's. There, it's so much liquid. Like, that's another thing, too. If you have appetite problems, 
having that much liquid is going to be a problem eventually. You know, you're going to feel bloated all the time. You're going to just hate fucking life. Like, uh, that's why I'm a fan of adding, uh, if you're going to do a gallon of milk a day or whatever, like, add stuff to it as well, like uh, shots of olive oil. That didn't really affect your appetite, really. Um, you know, because fat is one of those things where just fat is so calorically dense and it's not, you can eat a lot of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, although fat does trigger your satiety response, so I don't remember if that's ghrelin or leptin. But uh, you will feel full faster with fat. Uh, like, you will right. feel like you don't need to eat. You won't you won't feel bloated, but you you feel like you don't want to eat anymore. So also Hershey's chocolate syrup is um, by the way a secret life hack that you can go ahead and implement. Um, that that's been around for a while too. Yeah, uh, Bob well. Hoffman used to just jerk his dick to uh, making protein shakes with Hershey's chocolate milk, or Hershey's uh, syrup and uh, ice cream. Also, there's this old trick that a buddy of mine taught me. So you know what a nib of chocolate is, right? I assume it's just like a square. Correct. That is the technical term for a square of chocolate. Uh, so you take a nib, and while you're doing shit, right, you just pop one in your mouth, let it melt, it slides down. That's extra calories every second of the fucking day. If you're having issues gaining weight, that is one good way to just almost uh, subconsciously get extra calories, right? Um... And you don't really, like, it has nothing to do with hunger. Like, even if you're full, you can have a little nib of chocolate, let it melt, swallow that bitch down, right? And Apparently you have never seen uh, Monty Python, have you? You are not a true nerd, sir. There's a, there's a, a sketch in Monty Python where this guy just, like, is eating every fucking thing in the restaurant. Yeah. And uh, he says he positively couldn't eat, well, like, a single extra bite and with his check he gets a little like mint chocolate thing and right. uh, he's so he slips it in his mouth and then he just starts Explodes. projectile vomiting on yeah, everybody yeah yeah I've seen that scene I uh, also am an un uncultured swine so I have not seen all of ah, that you're from the back. south I, I mean it's a miracle that you even heard of Monty Python yeah yeah it'd be okay but with that being said that leads us into our next topic which is um, uh, how has the easily offended culture affected your blog and writing? Uh, if anything, it's made me more offensive. I, well, like, because at this point, it's kind of like what I was just talking about. At this point, everything I do is offensive to everyone. And so, I, I mean, just my basic existence offends most people on 4chan, it seems. Um, uh, cause, like, because whereas by their reckoning, I should either be in prison for something or uh, or I should be one of them and be living in my parents' basement, just a fat fucking slob. Uh, since I'm not doing either of those two things, they seem to really dislike me. So I basically just... I've just been ramping up the insanity. I, I assume... Well, I mean, I've gotten a lot of messages about it uh, that not only are people loving the new articles, but they're loving, like, the extra porn and the extra gore and just, like... I just, you know, I, just like Emerald, you got to kick it up a notch. So, if anything, I think that uh, the easily offended culture and the people kind of revolting against it is is kind of helped your blog. I mean, you've you've gotten some insane numbers too. Yeah, and um, just for anybody who thinks that I'm some kind of edge lord, I, Bryce, I think you can attest to this. The shit I put in my blog is shit I actually like. I, it, it's not like I'm playing a uh, playing a particular role when I write that blog. It's it's just me. That prolapse porn, prolapse porn. Oh God damn! So. I love prolapse porn. <laughs> You've heard it here first, guys. Um, I've never fucked a chick who could prolapse either her vagina or her ass, but I would greatly enjoy it. So if anybody knows any girl who can do that, or if one of our three female listeners can do it, by all oh, means, get in contact with me. Uh, actually, there's a some chick who uh, is a fan of me on Instagram who is extraordinarily timid, but she's a nice girl. Uh, she uh, she said she, she thinks I'm up to three female listeners now. So. That is fucking fantastic. Well, thanks I know. all three of you. Hey, we're, uh, we're, taking, we're taking over the world one, one vagina at a time. That's right. Um, 
hashtag movement. But, uh, yeah, so so it really hasn't affected, I don't think it's affected your writing. And it, if you're really easily offended, like, there's a safer work version on www.castandpain.com. Otherwise, you can find his stuff on the blog spot. Um, yes, indeed. And you can find the better stuff on the blog spot. <laughs> <laughs> so... Basically, what I do for the uh, for the website is I change the title because it has something to do with Google uh, metrics, Correct. and then yes. I um, I make it PG thirteen. So I take out all the porn, I take out all the tits. Like it's not even like to maximum level. It's uh, and then I take out all the shits, all the fucks, all the pussies. I think I leave dick and bitch in there, but they get away with that on like FXX. So what about what? So basically, all of the seven words. Um, George Carlin. What is it? Shit, cunt, sex, drugs. Shit, I, I, cunt, fuck. I, it, there was a fucking Anthrax song back in the day that was about the seven words, but I don't remember it very well. I haven't listened to that album since like sophomore year at high school. You almost got there, man. Don't worry about it. But with that being said, um, I, there I go again fucking saying it. God damn it. Now I told I you. These things. Yeah, now, now we're up God to like 12 it. on the day. Okay, well, I have a story that I would like to tell you guys real quick before it leaves my mind because something reminded me of it. The easy offended, the easily offended culture is what reminded me of it. Um, so, if you're at the gym, you disgusting motherfucker, and you leave your fucking used underwear in the goddamn fucking gym locker that I'm assigned to, I will punch you in the fucking face. Jesus Christ, who is doing that? I had to go get a, f I, no, no, multiple paper towels. Fuck that. I had to get it out because that's where I set my fucking backpack, you piece of shit. That's just fucking strange. Back to your you regular know, scheduled programming. Uh. That, that reminds me, they they asked, like, I had to, uh, when I joined the LA Fitness in um, in Pittsburgh, which had some of the biggest people I've ever lifted around. I mean, everybody... Yeah was gassed to the fucking eyeballs. There was one guy who had so much acne on his back that he had to wipe down the bench when he was wearing a sleeveless shirt because his zits would pop on the fucking bench. Oh, my I, God. He was like he was in bubble wrap filled with pus. So so when, I, when I'm when i doing the walkthrough at the beginning, they were like, so we have a, we have a fairly strict no steroids policy on the premises. And I was like, who really? the fuck is doing <laughs> gear in the gym? And they were like, oh, well... That brings us to our next point. Those are the Sharps containers. We have six of them in this locker room. And I was like, I have never seen Sharps containers. And what that also minutes? just goes directly against what you just said. And he was like, well, we're not idiots. And people keep leaving their uncapped pins all over the all over the locker room. And I was like, oh, I've seen what that. kind of okay. savage isn't capping their fucking pin and then leaving it? Like, I, like my mind melted. And I was like, people actually leave uncapped pins just laying around. And they were like... Yeah, so just please don't do that. I was like, I don't even do that at my house. <laughs> like, oh, what man. kind of animal are these people? Well, it's but, the um, same thing. Like, my gym, you know, it's it's great and everything. Mercy Fitness Center, it's it's great, and it's a great, you know, family environment and everything like that. But Well, that's adorable. Take... Do you guys hold hands and sing? No, well, hey, we actually have a competitor in there. His name is Brian Pham. Uh, he competes at 132. Dude pulls like 500, 600. Dude's crazy. Dude is How tall crazy. Is this guy? He's teeny. They're like but, three and a half feet tall? Uh, no, like four or nine or something like that. Oh, he's a straight up midget. He's amazing. But, um, dude. I'm not uh, saying there's anything wrong with being a midget. Like, first no. off, trying to hold a bar with those tiny little hands? God damn. Well, you know what? He holds it and he holds it for like 535. I think is what he pulled in his last meet. So he switched from physique to potty. Uh, uh, he switched from physique to um, powerlifting. So there is a physique weight class for 130 pound. Who the fuck I wants to see a 130 pound person take off the clothes? He's ripped, man. Who cares? I, I have fucking He's 130 pounds. for him. Yeah, but that's really muscular for him. So I, like I mean, a, I, I the very like first. The it's very like first uh, muscle and fitness I ever bought had a had a bodybuilding midget in it. Yeah. He, he's not a midget. He's just over that, though. I mean, he's like 5'2", five 5'1", five something like that. You said um, he was 4'9". 
He's he's at least a foot and a half shorter than I am. Everybody's a foot and a half shorter than you are. <sighs> Give me shit for being tall again, Jamie. God damn and it. You're a goddamn giraffe. <laughs> I've never heard of any but like you just you're a you're a ridiculous size for a person. Well, it's just like me being at two hundred pounds and that being laughable. Right? True. So but uh According yeah, to Reddit, so, you could never get laid. Never. You're ever. The, the world's tallest manlet. Oh my god, man! I hate that fucking phrase. Oh my god! I just want to grab those faggots who say that word by their ankles and beat their fucking face on the ground, uh, because you know it's just some pussy. It's not like it's not like anybody who's walking around over two hundred pounds ever said the word manlet. It's the same people who would leave fucking dirty underwear in the fucking gym locker room. Fucking human garbage. Well, they certainly wouldn't be. Had a they wouldn't be leaving stain? uncapped pins around because those fucking pussies are way too scared of gear for that. These underwear, man. I was fucking like disgusted. I, you know, like, that's okay. craziness. Were there I, skid marks? Yes, I have. I have oh, this thing. Oh, I have so this... Were, were they inside out? No. Whew. It was just Still. Like piss on the front, shit on the back. Were they white? Yes, they were tidy whities Who the fuck is wearing <laughs> slingshots in this day and age? I just don't get it. That's too much. Man, that person you know needs what? to slow down. They need, they're doing too much. they got to slow down. You know what? I just want to have that level of confidence in my body. It's like, I had a really hard workout. I'm just going to leave my underwear here. Like, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I, I Like, that's, that's, that's how I finish a good workout, is I've just completely wrecked my underwear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, whew, that's something else. I mean, you know, like, no matter how much you wiggle and dance, the last few drops go down your pants. Everybody's going to end up with a little bit of, you know, pee dribble here and there. It's it's just what happens. There's no way to stop it. And conversely, with chicks, you know, I have never, ever in my life dated a chick who didn't pee while deadlifting and squatting. They just do. Incontinence, yeah. yeah. Mel is just running off to the gym in between every, or off to the bathroom in between every set. Especially now that she's got, because I got her hooked on doing partials, and she loves back squat partials. But, I mean, she might as well just wear a set of Depends. Uh, hey, whatever works, man. But um, there actually are some females that do that in powerlifting meets. Just a little fun thing there. Hey, but, um, I, I, I'll, I tag me in, buddy. I will get in there and clean that up. <laughs> you know you know the chick who uh, puked in that one deadlift? The, she's in competition she puked? Hell yeah. Waterfall. That was that. I was at that meet, and she was lifting directly after me every attempt. And I was I spat so much fucking game at her after she puked. And she was like, "I literally have puke in my underwear, but if you want to fuck, let's fuck." And I was like, "Fuck yes, let's do this." <laughs> I am broke as shit though. Can you pay for a hotel? And she was like, "I'm probably broker than you." We literally like tried to figure out how much money we had so that we parking could get lot. a hotel to fuck. And it was it was in Alabama, or it was. Georgia or Alabama, and it was it was Georgia, and it was a million degrees. Uh, we would have died of heat exhaustion, so we were just like, uh, fuck it, next time. And I guess she she was a nurse. She quit lifting and uh, got married or something like that. I don't know. But Here's a real question. Since you I never got south, to... Huh? Since you were in the South, was it reverse cowgirl? We didn't fuck. Oh. Because we would have died of heat exhaustion. And also, I was like, fine, fuck it, like... Do you live anywhere near here or on the way back to Birmingham? And she was like, I live in exactly the opposite direction. She like lived in South Carolina or something. And I was like, there is just no way we can make this happen. Because I did not, didn't. like, yeah. So, And I figured we would, but no, nah, we didn't. It was tragic. Plus, she wouldn't be covered in puke, so it wouldn't be half as much fun. Just going to every powerlifting meet carrying a bucket of puke from the girl before. <laughs> Fucking, Dude, then where's my Cinderella? And uh, going back to that whole thing about drinking too much milk and being bloated, the way the reason why she puked, and I actually said to her twice, I was like, "You gotta pump the brakes on that muscle milk." She oh, was no. fucking chugging muscle milk the entire meat. I, we're talking soy, like no. at least ten of them, and I was like, "You gotta stop! Like it's too much muscle milk. Like <laughs> it's just way too much." You've gone and too she far. just. Kept she just kept going. So I ended up missing my third attempt on deadlift because I, I was dead cold because it was like uh, an hour it took to like clean off the judges and uh, <laughs> clean off the... Because she puked all over them. It was yes. fucking hilarious. When I, so I'm, I'm pacing back and forth because I pace. 
in between lifts. And so I'm pacing back and forth, like screaming along with uh, no Zodiac or something. And I look over and I'm like, is she, did she bite her lip? Is she bleeding? Because it started out as just like a dribble down her chin. And then it, the dribble just slowly transformed into projectile vomit. I was just like, stopped dead in my tracks like, oh my god, this is awesome. Judges did not know what was going on, so they didn't get out of way in time. It was amazing. She just did painted you, the whole first row. Did you get a chance to look, see the look on their face when they've just oh, been hit by the projectile? Oh, they were horrified. It was scrambling over their chairs into the people behind them. It was fucking hilarious. Oh my god. So everybody should go to a powerlifting meet like that, just by the way. Um, that is one of the things that you should do in this lifetime. Please, go to a powerlifting meet where you know someone's going to vomit. Yeah. Or, or well, if you at, have at friends... WPO meets, they'll, at WPO meets, sometimes they puke, but they always bleed out of their noses. If you it's... have friends that are into powerlifting, make sure they drink at least a gallon of muscle milk so that you can go <laughs> see them vomit. Whew. And, oh, God, can you imagine if it was bananas that had that horrible fake banana smell on top of everything else? That would oh, just be... Oh, no. Oh, that's just a bad idea. That's a bad time. What color would it be? Well, I guess it'd be bottom. It would be yellow, I would imagine. Okay. Hers was oh. definitely brown. It was very chocolatey. God damn. Well, you know what? That leads us into our next uh, question. I actually did uh, answer this, right? Because it has to do with diet. I did answer this, but I'd like to hear your, your thoughts. I told him that you ate plenty of chicken wings. Does Jamie yes. Lewis have cock in his diet? Do I have cock in my diet? Yes. Somebody actually asked that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I have not eaten a cock recently, no. Okay, so. no chicken? No, I have eaten chicken. I just haven't there sucked a go. dick in a while. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, because uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was a double entendre. I, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had chicken this morning. Um, I really try to avoid eating chicken because I really am just tired of it. Um, I think everybody who's in the fitness industry is tired of it just because it's like the cheapest meat ever. Fried chicken is the only kind of chicken I eat at this point. So uh, anything breaded, it'll be fine. Oh god damn, I love it. Yeah, but uh, no, yeah, I'm... I had I had chicken tenders this morning. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah I um, uh, I really it's mostly beef for me. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the, I'm the same way if if funds allow it. I mean, I've been uh, on this breaded chicken kick lately. I've been um, eating this Asian style barbecue breaded chicken that I bought from a store. Oh no, I'm gonna die because it's prepackaged. But whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's quick. It's allowing me to get through the move. So, um, oh, I've question. been, I found a, uh, a pound yeah. bag of, uh, wasabi almonds. I've just been Do crushing it. that bitch. Do it. God damn. I love those things. Could not uh, love a human baby as much as I love wasabi almonds. So here's, here's another one that I just threw in for shits and giggles, right? All right. So, um, Jamie, if you had to choose between giving a homeless guy a rusty trombone or doing a three-hour podcast on the work of John Eldridge with Paul Carter, how fast would you take a shotgun wound to the chest? Yeah, I think I'd probably be more apt to do a uh, forty-four magnum to the chest, but um, but <laughs> if I if I had to choose between one of those two things, I gotta Google rusty trombone because that's like one of those things that fucking kids in middle school talk about and nobody's ever actually done. Yeah, nobody's done it. Um, a man stands with his knees and back slightly torqued with feet at least shoulder width apart to expose his yeah. anus. The fuck does that mean? Oh, you get rimmed while yeah. getting a reach around. Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I, you're I, playing I the trombone. That. Yeah. I I mean, I, I will, uh, I'll rim a chick uh, with a dirty asshole, but I, I, I don't think a hobo, a male hobo, I don't think... No, if it was... They didn't say if he was, like, a fresh homeless guy, either. Yeah. I, I, I'd go with a, a crust punk chick. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd help her rub one out while I ate her ass. But, yeah, probably not a guy. So I'd go with the Paul Carter. And I looked that guy up. Uh, it seems like he and Paul Carter are probably friends. Um, but, I mean, I, it would just be fun to uh, mock the shit out of him for, uh, you know, changing his spots in regards to sex and life in general. so, And also, I'd like to mock him for like overcharging for programs that are really, at the end of the day, not particularly earth-shattering. Uh, oh, yeah, like the, um, 
like the booty blaster chicks on Instagram that give yeah, you that yeah yeah and, yeah and he and his whole crew they uh they're all into yoga now as I understand Hot yoga I don't know what kind of yoga even if it's DDP yoga I still don't think it's Hot yoga is a f uh, craze right now, so I'm just wondering because I've seen. Isn't a that lot hot of yoga? I, I mean, I, I, why not just fuck in a hot room? Like, I don't want to listen to those fucking yoga bitches yammer on endlessly in that super annoying yoga voice. You don't want to? No, I'm not oh, into that. Man, I can't do it. I, I can't Come stand on. their voices. And also, like, I'm at a. I'm at a size right now that uh, yo the yoga chicks, when they come out of their class, scurry like cockroaches when I come near them. So that's pretty awesome. Light switch got flipped on. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know why people ask these questions, but we're answering them anyway. Fuck all right. It. Do it. Uh, all right. So now back to the uh, the regular stuff. So Which one would one... you rather do? Huh? I, I imagine you would rather debate Paul Carter on uh, his Christianity. Um, you know what? Actually, bucket list stuff, I'd go for the homeless guy. Hmm. I actually said that to get a rise out of people because people think that, you know, bodybuilding and physique guys are gay. But that'd be, I, it would be fun to do the podcast. I mean, I just, um, I don't, I don't know too much about Paul Carter and I don't know too much about, uh, John, blah, blah, blah. So, and if he they're claims, doing yoga. He claims not to be a... He claims not to be a pastor or a preacher or anything like that, but he writes a bunch of books about, like, how to not look at porn and how to be a good Christian man, etc. Uh, he uh, he also claims to like. I love it when when you see some Christian uh, when their whole background is like, I did all of this comparative religious studies, and then and then I I decided that the the true the only religion is Christianity, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, right. even in the fucking Ten Commandments, it doesn't say there are no other gods. It says, I'm the best of all the gods. So, like, can't they settle the fuck down about the Christianity and, like, all right, you want to give big ups to him first? Fine, but then, you know, maybe throw a tip of the cap to Hanuman or something. At least Hanuman lifts. You know, fuck. one of my favorite things is these guys who, like, end up killing a bunch of people and end up... Uh, you know, doing all the bad things in life, and then they're like, "Oh, I'm a changed person." It's like people don't people don't really change past the age of adolescence. Um, yeah, yeah, your personality's really fully formed at 24. So, uh, I mean, unless you're somebody like Paul Carter, in which case, I guess you uh, don't really have a personality, and you just do whatever the internet tells you to. So, if you're like a 60 year old convicted felon that's born again, good. On you, <laughs> yeah. Like Tookie Williams allegedly I mean, turned be... super Christian at the end, and they were trying to get him a pardon. And it's like the man was like almost single-handedly responsible for the crack epidemic. I think we could go ahead and and help him shuffle off his mortal coil. To be fair, I'm all for people finding things in their life that they can kind of you know rely on. You know, the things in life that they find structure in, and that's that's healthy, and I have no problem with that. It's just like, eh, you killed, like, three people. It's like, <laughs> now's not the best time. Yeah, and also, it maybe it helps you, but you don't got to scream about it all day long. Look, that's another thing. They, they've got to prophesize it, too. I, 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 you know, again, like, you want to spread the word of the gospel? That's that's up to you, but, like, you killed three people still, so... Yeah. Like, that's, that's a little, that's a little fishy. All, also, you know what I found is uh, the the brands that become that the brands that are legitimately good that become popular are popular from word of mouth, not because there's some psychopath screaming on a street corner about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you want to bring up psychopaths, have you ever seen um, Alex Jones? Oh yeah, he's a fucking nut. Amazing. Although I love the fact people still listen to him, and it's like. He's a conspiracy theorist who's rich. If he's rich, somebody's lining his pockets, which would genu generally indicate that he's probably not giving you the whole truth anymore. If even you've if he seen wasn't the first. memes, if you've seen the memes, you know what his secret is. It's the what male vitality pills that he sells, and the he sells blood. male vitality pills. Now? Yes, he does. I'm not fucking joking. I know he sells tactical, uh, tactical showers. There's like pictures of him with his uh, shirt off and stuff. And you want to know what a tactical shower is? 
Um, I, I can't think of a definition for that right now for some reason. <laughs> it's a wet wipe in digital camo packaging. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. No, actually, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I, I, at first I was like, why would anybody need a bulletproof shower? It was it was just not like I I was like or like mole harnesses or because you know you see uh, you know they make tactical weighted vests now. What the fuck? What is happening? That's like a, that's like a very specific niche. I it's mean, not. Have... It's just for all these fucking nerds who are running around thinking that they're SWAT or some shit. And it's like you couldn't even pass a fitness test to make uh, to become a cop. You're like a fucking mole rent a cop or something like that, running around and tactical everything. I did one pull up. All right, thanks. Well, move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they own every gun under the uh, under the sun, and they're always yammering on about which gun is better than which gun. Well, to be fair, there's a lot of guys out there who who pose and stuff like that. But I do have that brings us into our next goddamn question. If we can keep on track, goddamn, this has been rambly, but you guys seem to like that. Hey, so. they love the ramble. Fuck it. Um, have have you radically changed your views on anything fitness related and or slash life related? Um, well, that's a really broad question, isn't it? I'll let you answer that one first. I got to give it some thought here. So one of the biggest changes that I, uh, my life change has been, you know, me losing weight and, and actually giving a shit about health and all that stuff because I used to feel fucking invincible. Holy shit. And then I realized that no, not fucking invincible. Like, no, I, I, this is all this shit. You got to pay the piper sometime. And uh, I learned that very early in life, and I'm very thankful for that because before I started this whole fitness shit, I was lazy, I had poor time management, I did all this bullshit, bad shit, and uh, the stuff that was eventually going to, I believe, do, I, I truly do believe, was uh, was going to get me killed. If you if you could, I mean, you could say that uh, that I'm a born again fitness enthusiast. So. Um, that's one thing that I've, that has just radically changed in me, right? And it was changed at 19, which is pretty, pretty impressive because, you know, like I said, once you've reached adolescence, I think you're pretty much the shitty version of yourself that you're always going to be. It, it, you know, give or take, things happen, all that shit. Um, and I guess that kind of answers both of them, I guess, right? Life and fitness. Um... I would say some of the more recent radical changes is um, uh, I used to um, under put in under importance on my sleep, and that was really hindering everything, basically. And once I started putting that on the top of my list, getting eight to nine hours of sleep every single night for a couple of years now, um, I have seen a dramatic improvement in quality of life and, and overall health, cognitive abilities, all of the above. So you need to take some fucking caffeine or something, man. You sound what? like you're falling asleep as you're speaking. I'm falling asleep listening to you speak, and I'm literally vibrating at an entirely different frequency than I ever have on stimulants. Sir, it's insulting. I'm offended. Uh, you honestly, it it sounds like you were like you recorded what you were saying on a record and it was a wind up record player and then the charge went out of the wind out of the record player so you were just getting slower and your voice kept getting deeper and like slower and deeper deeper slower you like quieter. that Yes, I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to talk like this for the rest of the pod. Can you even oh, hear me? please don't. No, I can no, barely hear no. you. Sir, sir, sir. Yeah, liven yourself up okay. over okay. there. Be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm alive. There you go. All right. All right. But I, uh, answer the question. Oh, go ahead. Were you done? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, my long-winded answer and boring answer is done. I don't know that it was boring. I just lost track of what you were saying because you were so quiet and speaking so slowly that I just was like... Do, 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 do. Just kind of staring off into the middle distance. It's almost like it's almost like you're my wife or something. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, um. So let's see. I. You know what? 
I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that the uh, the training wise, and I know this is going to be extremely unpopular with Reddit. There's nothing whatsoever wrong with body part training, and anybody who tells you that there is, one is small and two is weak as shit, because uh, you know who I see doing body part programs a lot, jacked people, and you know who I see doing full body workouts all the time. Uh, the exact opposite of that first group. So, um, yeah, I, there's nothing at all wrong with body part training. Uh, like, I, I, I dispensed with it because I, I was thinking about it too rigidly and wasn't able to work certain exercises into a body part system, like cleans. Um, but provided you don't take it too seriously, body part training systems are great. So, um, yeah, there's that. And then uh, life-wise... I would say that my my greatest life change, for better or worse, uh, you know, and a case could be made either way, would be uh, I, I stopped being straight edge when I was 27, and uh, so like drinking, trying drugs, shit like that. I I uh, I would say that that was probably my biggest life change that's happened as an adult. Um, and again, I, I, a case could be made either way, whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, but. Um, yeah, like we said, the last podcast. Did we get the last? You you got it working. It's just you couldn't hear you very well. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think we talked about it in that one, saying that like, basically, you just got to keep an eye on it. And uh, since then, I've had a couple of people say, "Hey, your three day thing is dead on point." Like once you get after it th- more than three days in a row, you can start start sliding down that hill. But um. Yeah. So, yeah, I. I think I think that's my biggest life change. I and really I was just doing it to be a dick. Um, like it's the typical straight edge thing of like I don't need to get fucked up in order to enjoy my life and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're really just doing it out of spite, and it's not. I don't know. I I, I, I I'm not going to proselytize one way or the other. That I think that being sober is like if you're constantly yelling about being sober, you're the least fun person to be around on earth. But uh, if you're constantly fucked up, you're not a lot of fun either. So, well, you're either a lot of fun or you're no fun. But um, so basically, you made yourself open to different experiences that you were exactly used to. I mean, like, you know, when people people oftentimes experiment in college, and then they're like, "Oh, I don't want to do this," or "Oh, I don't want to do that." But you started when you were 27, and um, you know, there's there's something I can respect about that because. You know, you waited long enough so that you weren't, you know, like a complete and total retard with it. Um, yeah, I got I mean. pretty fucking retarded about it, but I... <laughs> yeah, it'd be fine. But, yeah, I got I got back on track, so... Yeah, yeah. That's the important part. And, you know, uh, a lot of people seem to have this, like, oh, you, you drink more than once a week, you're an alcoholic. I'm like, no, calm down, right? Uh, people who have drinks every six months, you know? Uh, I, I, I mean, I personally don't drink a lot and, uh, I don't smoke pot. I know it sounds like I'm a stoner, but I'm not. (laughs) Especially today, man. (laughs) Oh my God. Stop giving me shit. Hey, the bathroom story was pretty good. The underwear story. The bathroom story was good. Oh, and by the way, I, uh, before we, before we run out of questions, you got to give me like the, the, well, you can just go ahead and say you had something you wanted to say because... Um, I'm doing an interview. I'm doing a written interview, and I'm going to do a podcast interview with Bud Jeffries, and yes. Uh, yes. who is awesome. The guy is awesome. And um, so, and for anybody who doesn't know who Bud Jeffries is, he's like a semi-mythical, non-competitive lifter who just does crazy shit. Uh, the, the lifts a lot of like junk, basically, and uh, he's crazy strong. Apparently, he has like. Three, uh, three racks on his property with 700 pounds loaded up on him at any given time, and he'll just, like, squat him at random. I just saw a video of him the other day doing kettlebell snatches while throwing a knife so accurately that he was able to pop a balloon that was only, like, a quarter of the way uh, inflated. Um, but uh, so I'm going to do that with him, and a person, actually Tano, gave me this question. I'll just say it now. Fuck Mary, uh, fuck Mary, kill. And quite frankly, I have given this a great deal of thought, and still have yet to come up with an answer that I like. And you can't okay. say you just kill yourself. You, that's not a. That's not a. It's not an answer you can give. Oh God, go ahead. Caitlyn Jenner, Roseanne, 
and uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Oh my God! Um, <laughs> that God one that will just stop you dead in your tracks. So, Caitlyn Jenner, Roseanne, or Rose, or uh, Rose. I'm sorry, Roseanne or uh, Rosie it? O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. There we go. God, that was getting two hours mixed up. Is she still alive? Um, yeah, but she's irrelevant. So, oh. it um, that was kind of a burn. I'm sorry. That was. I don't. Well, I mean, I guess she's not on TV anymore. I, I don't. I don't watch daytime TV. So that was that was kind of a knee jerk reaction. Um, that was pretty brutal, though, especially for a person who's just not been nothing but a celebrity. Yeah, uh, but it it's uh, so. Uh, I would say. God damn it! Fuck! Why did you do this to me? Fuck! It's a good one, right? Uh, uh, Tano came through in the clutch. Fuck. Um. Okay. I I can't. Fuck Caitlyn Jenner. I can't do it. Okay. So that one's got to be moved down on the list. Um, I could probably marry her, but it would be a sexless marriage. Um, but I'd be, she would be my sugar mama, honestly. Um, I would probably fuck Roseanne and then kill Rose, or, uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Huh. Interesting. Why would you fuck Roseanne and kill Rosie O'Donnell out of curiosity? Um, because I think it's just because I can say that I fucked a star. You could say that with Rosie O'Donnell. No. Wow. Rosie you're, O'Donnell. you're really, you're really, uh. Get you're working, wrecked, Rosie O'Donnell. You're working stiff on Rosie O'Donnell right now. What's, what's your problem with Rosie O'Donnell? You know what? She just isn't relevant anymore. It's fucking stupid. Why is her name being brought up still? Nobody cares. <laughs> Jesus. That's the only thing. Nobody cares. By the way, guys, Wait, uh, share this. In the last personally. two years, she has been on something called Smilf, whatever that is. Difficult People, American Dad, When We Rise. She was in Hairspray Live. When on was the she on American game. Dad? She was on American Dad in 2017 as a townie in the episode Camp Campa Wanda. Holy shit. Big role, I guess. Um, Goddamn. Okay. She was on the TV show Empire, which I sooner would go blind and deaf before watching a single episode of that. I, I got into it a little bit. I'm just not a fan of it. It just got stupid. I hate that fucking it woman. stupid. God damn, oh, I hate that cookie? I hate that fucking woman with every fiber of my being. She just seems like such a fucking cunt. You mean Cookie? I don't know what the fuck her name is. The bitch on there who's constantly scowling. That's Cookie. Jesus. I mean, if there's ever been a person who uh, upon whom an acid attack by a Pakistani would be justified, it's that broad. I just can't. I hate her fucking face. Share this on her Twitter as well. Um, but... <laughs> But it's just, um, man, that's fucking rough. Go, you go ahead and answer the question now. You have to. I mean, oh, all right. Well, I've given it a great deal of thought. So uh, I Thank am going you. to agree with you on Caitlyn Jenner. I would marry Caitlyn Jenner, although it's just because I, uh, I, I don't necessarily. I don't really. I mean, I've never even watched that fucking Kardashian show because I can't stand vocal fry actually. And uh, so, oh my god, that's you. It's you. Yeah, You're the only person fucking. I can't. I can't listen to that. I can't. Oh my god. I, and also, they're just all fucking morons. And and still, I I still am a hundred percent certain that Caitlyn Jenner is the second person in that family to have a male to female sex change oh. because. Chloe oh. is was not born a female. Oh no. Oh uh, no. Chloe's just... chin makes Jay Leno look chinless. Now you have Tumblr after you, man. I everybody can get fucked. Oh. But uh so I would uh <laughs> I'd marry Caitlyn Jenner uh cuz I don't really have a problem with that with Bruce Jenner at all and uh, or Kate I mean other than looking like he's had a stroke or she's had a stroke uh I, like I mean I wouldn't want to look at her but I uh I could live in the same building with her, I assume. 
Yeah. Uh, and then I would kill Roseanne because I just find her to be intolerable and somebody needs to punish her for keeping Roseanne on the air as long as it was and also for uh, that little fucking beady-eyed shitbird who's on uh, The Big Bang Theory for giving him a career. So that, 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 that all just needs to, that needs to be punished. And uh, then I guess I'd fuck Rosie O'Donnell. Makes sense. I, and yeah. I, unlike you, I don't really have a problem with Rosie O'Donnell. I couldn't. I, I honestly couldn't name three things that she's done other than having Googled her. Oh, so basically, I mean, like the mo- the rest of America. Well, she was on the show, uh, I, 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 <laughs> but I don't know. I don't even know what. I mean, if the if the question was replaced with Ellen, I might consider killing Ellen because she's just annoying as shit. You know, Nobody's that, that would happy. change my answer. Nobody is that happy. That would change my answer. Would it? Who who would be in place of... Uh... Uh, because they're both daytime talk show hosts, let's just do Ellen instead of Rosie. Instead of Rosie O'Donnell? Yeah. Oh, I killed Roseanne. Well, there you go. But fuck Ellen. Come on. Okay. Come on. It's only a way to shut her up. I really, I think she would talk through the whole fucking thing. With that crazy ass grin on her face the whole time. Oh my god! Actually, I could Why not. Why did you fuck back Rosie me in. into this? I couldn't um, fuck Rosie. I would fuck. I'd, I'd fuck Ellen. Actually, out of the three, she's the best looking anyway. I'm probably gonna regret saying all this later, but it'll be fine. Don't worry Oof. about it. Why are you gonna regret it later? <sighs> it's on the internet. People are gonna say that I'm gonna kill Roseanne. Or I'm sorry, Rosie O'Donnell, and then they're going to link it to her Twitter, and then well, I, nobody cares. I really, so I really don't think that um, that's going to happen. I think they, I think you you might have a uh, very elevated opinion of of the popularity of our podcast. No, Rosie O'Donnell, she picks fights with small people too. Does she? Well, you were working stiff on her for absolutely no reason. I mean, she seems like a nice lady, and, and that's like coming a nice from me. Lady, nobody cares. Either one. She had a daytime talk show for, like, what, a hundred years or something? They gave Sarah Gilbert a daytime talk show. Nobody cares about that? her either. It's fucking Darlene from Roseanne. Oh, Christ almighty. Nobody cares. That bitch is, oh, she is a different breed of ugly. She Jesus. is She is like the most man-hating cunt. Is I'm she really? sorry. Yes. If I was born with a face like that, I probably would too. <sighs> oh, Christ. Rosie was on The View. Oh, that's her. Oh, mm. see, that's more of the reason to kill her. <laughs> um. So, okay, I think we've answered that. That was a little. That was a good one. Fucking Grim Tano! Holy shit! Yeah. Oh, and for anybody who doesn't know who Tano is, uh, he he writes an awesome fucking uh, blog called End Scenario. That's basically he just it, basically you take my baddest motherfuckers, but you make them about serial killers and people who like could eat anything there was a a really disgusting one he made about, about this french guy who like ate people and he ate rocks and he ate all kinds of crazy shit he was like he could never be like full and so if he'd go like 12 hours without eating a shitload of like live chickens and things he was just like this gassy saggy like his skin was all saggy and disgusting he basically just like Looked like melting cookie dough, I suppose. I, it was gross and hilarious. So you guys got to check it out. End scenario. I will definitely read that with morbid curiosity. Oh, my God. Um, but uh, here, here's another one. Big ask for Jamie or anyone else. Recently he mentioned the home edits or home disc uh, massager. Could you give anyone or just give me a link to the exact model recommended? You mentioned a massager. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, personally, I, like the best massager on the market would be a Hitachi wand, but uh, they're yes. ridiculously expensive. So I really, I generally buy like the knockoff Hitachi wands. Um, okay, yeah. But holy shit, a, a chicks come like it's free with those. But if they're talking about that, actually uh, the home medics massager, I will. Uh, and just to everybody who's listening to this, if you do not own a knockoff Hitachi wand or a Hitachi, you are failing in the bedroom as a human being. I have given more girl friends that I wasn't even fucking 
uh, vibrators, then I probably have given them to girls I was dating because I just felt badly that they weren't getting off enough and I'd find out they didn't have a good vibrator and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And those are friends for life, I'll tell you You that. heard it. You heard it here first, guys. Casual conversation with Jamie Lewis. You have enough orgasms, lady friend? No. No, I don't. Oh, let me pull out my drawer of magic vibrators. Hey, That's there you go. Well, I know. I just buy them off of uh, Amazon and ship them to their house. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Like, come here, girl. We're going we're gonna to browse some vibrators. Come here, girl. So it is the Home Medics Mercury Percussion Massager with Heat. And uh, it has three attachments. I will. Uh, I would not recommend using this on a vagina. I, I think it would probably not work well. Especially it, since the, the actual attachment is made of wood. And generally that wouldn't feel good on a clitoris, I don't think. But if you do, please upload it somewhere so that we can be it. Yeah. So, uh, next question. Uh, vaginas, protein, hand in hand, I guess. Uh, do your protein requirements slash diet change with goal, uh, with your goals change, i.e. fat loss or bulking or et cetera? Say that so, question again. Uh, he wrote it weird. Does your, but what he's saying is, do we change our protein, fats, carbs with our goals in mind? So like if we want to diet, we reduce carbs and stuff like that. Is that a serious question? Yes, it is. So do you do you change your protein? First of all, let's cover that. No. When you're dieting. Okay. I'm the same way. I just high protein all the time. Yeah. It, I mean, also, foods with a lot of protein in them taste better than every other thing. Steak, So, I mean, unless you're a Redditor, in which case you just fucking eat Cheetos all day long or whatever it is they eat. What do uh, Redditors Cheetos eat? Cheetos Oreos. Oh. Yeah. God, what a useless pack of fucking pieces of shit those people are. Um, so, uh, fats, does your fat change? Like the, uh, gym, yeah, gym I mean, that that's why I asked if the question was serious. Of course, your, your diet's going to change with, with your, uh, with your requirement or like, I mean, obviously you tailor your diet to what you're doing. So if you want to lose fat, you're going to eat a different diet than if you wanted a dirty bulk. Right. That right. question seems stupid to me. You but there's what? no such thing as stupid questions, just stupid we, people. We answer them, though. That's the thing. If you guys have any questions, by the way, uh, put them in the comment section below. We will answer them. Yeah, it's not like we're going to put your name on it and then tell the entire internet that you're an idiot. No. I'll just call you an idiot. Uh, so, okay, we're just going to go ahead and that <laughs> question. Is it uh, me or is that a stupid question? You know what? It's been asked enough where they could Google it. What but, the uh, fuck? I think, I think it's, that... It's just, is that not intuitive? I think that people tend to... God, how, how long have we talked about the overcomplication of the fitness shit? Yeah, I, I mean, guess we have. I think that, that that is part of it. They they think that, oh my god, I, I need to lower my protein requirements because I'm bulking. And it's like, no, nah, just more food. Um, sorry. <laughs> you know, I wish there was a magic bullet or something or a Hitachi magic wand. Um, but, uh, this is another one you'll find stupid, but how many days a week is optimal to work out? So I'm guessing this person is afraid of overtraining and he browses Reddit. Oh yeah. Whew. So how many days a week optimal do you need to train in order to keep the, uh, the Babadook in your basement, I guess. Um, boy. You know, I'm not real scared of the Babadook, so I would say um, the answer to that question is the same as how long is a piece of string. It's, it's individual. It's based on the individual string. Yes. Okay. So, you know, good place to start for people uh, three days a week, I think, because anything less than that, I truly do believe is kind of wasting time. I don't know. Kind of wasting time. What do you think on that? Uh, there's there's really no way that to... It depends on how much time you have. It depends on how much recovery time you have. It depends on what your diet is. It depends uh, on your level of interest in lifting weights. I, I mean, there are so many factors involved in what optimal is that basically it comes down to how many times a week do you like to train? That's optimal. The end. It's not... 
there you know, I mean, there's there's no other answer. It's how many times a week do you like to train? That's the optimal number of times to train. The so end. basically play with it. I mean, life I, is one big experiment. Fucking. If you want to go to the gym, go to the gym. If you don't, don't. Uh, it's like it's that simple. So if you force yourself to go to the gym when you're not feeling it, yeah. uh, some on on some occasions you'll have a good you'll have a good lift. But there is one of two things that's playing into that. Either you think you have to lift, and that's why you're going, in which case you're going to have a shit workout. Uh, or if your body feels good, but your brain isn't quite there, and you feel like you might just want to go move around a bit, that's a good reason to lift. If your brain's there, but your body's hurting, you can probably have a good workout too. But if you have neither of those two things, like if you just don't want to be in the gym, don't go. You're going to have a shitty workout. It's pointless. So that kind of covers that. I mean... Uh... I don't know if seven days a week is great for everybody, but there's some people that do it seven days a week. So just play around with it. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's yeah, I have trained, trying it. I've trained anywhere between four times a week and uh, like ten times a week my entire adult life. Yeah. yeah. I've currently been doing four times a week for like almost ever. Four to five times a week, somewhere around there. So... It's like what works for me. I, I really don't know how to tell people what the optimal thing is. It's because it's individual. Uh, but with that being said, again, God damn it. Um, uh, I am a fan. This person says, I am a fan of Vikings. Hate, kill, fuck, repeat. What do you guys think are important lessons that we can take from culture's past? That's a pretty interesting question. That is a good question. I'm going to let you go ahead and go for that one first. Well, given the fact that I love history, I, I think that we can take a lot from past cultures. Um, I, I find past cultures to be a really good inspiration for a variety of different things. Um, I feel like people get a cursory view of, of certain civilizations. They'll sort of buy into the stereotypes and the uh, basically misinformation, like Vikings, for instance. I, like... Vikings are cool as shit, and I'm actually writing a book called Go Viking, uh, which I find regrettable at this point because there are so many, like, weird homophobic Nazis running around who think that they're fucking Vikings now, and it's like everything they do is wrong, uh, it, especially down to homophobia since Vikings were pretty well established to be bisexual. And Oh, yeah. Also, oh, yeah. Also, also <laughs> wife swapped a lot. Um, so anytime you, like pile weird Christian mores into uh, past cultures, it, it gets strange. But you really can learn a lot from from ancient cultures, um, like the Cossacks, for instance, in Russia. Um, I wish I still had that paper, too. That was another great, like, 90-page paper. The uh, Zaporozhian Cossacks were one sect of Cossacks who aren't actually, like, a... Um, they aren't an ethnicity, because Cossacks were basically psychotic Boy Scouts who lived in um, they lived in a variety of different places in the Ukraine and Russia and they were sort of pirates. They, um, they, they, they were just like a collection of ruffians and thieves and people who had deserted the Russian military who would just live out in the middle of nowhere and occasionally they would go and raid, raid places. Um, the Russians and the, um, and the Poles used them as mercenaries and uh, they were just fucking nuts. And they had really cool, like, traditions and habits. Um, one of the first, actually the first person to, ex like, to map um, Russia from Europe to uh, to the Pacific Ocean was a Cossack. Um, I think his name was Yitzhak. Anyway, he, um, like, they were just really interesting people, and they really had a zest for living that I think has kind of been lost. Um, so that's really where, it, for me, that's what it comes down to is finding historical people who really had a zest for living that's lost in the modern day. A, a real appreciation for living in the moment and uh, kind of living life to its fullest. I, I think that's, uh, people are so concerned with being safe and comfortable these days rather than interesting. And I think that's really, that's, that's what I draw on the most from, uh, from a historical perspective. Well, any other cultures other than Vikings that you've kind of looked into that you can also pull lessons from? Oh, definitely. Um, 
the Mongols, the Cossacks, the um, uh, it, it, really, you can go anywhere in the world and find interesting people. Um, the ancient Celts were really interesting people. Um, uh, the ancient Slavs had some, like, they had some really cool gods that you've never heard of, and um, they they had some interesting, like, tribal practices. Um, I generally stray away from the like the big names because typically they've they're overdone, and also the the big names from history, like the the uh, ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, they, when you get down to it, aren't real interesting because uh, they're big on uh, centrism and, well, not not the Greeks so much, but the Romans especially, yeah, really yeah. big on on centrism and homogenization, and I like that the idea of having a, like a world spanning empire that was under Roman rule. It would just be a boring place to fucking live, um, but uh, I yeah. Uh, let's see where else can we go. Uh, the Basques, fascinating people. They speak a language that's n it's a language isolate that's not even remotely related to anything else. That's fucking strange to look at. Uh, they have really cool uh, a really cool tradition of strength. So they've got these weird ass uh, competitions they get into where they all dress up like. The bad guys in Superman 2, like they're all in like black leather, and uh, they'll lift like these stone blocks that are like cubes that look extremely painful to lift. Oh no, um, Atlas stones on steroids. Yeah, <laughs> I, dude, I, I, you guys should Google them because they're fucking crazy. These, and uh, they they'll do shit like see who can chop down a field of wheat fastest with a scythe. Like they just have bizarre competitions, but they all seem fun. Um, there's... I think that was a way to increase productivity. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it really like they're all about like I'm the toughest man around, and so I can like yeah. everything you can do, I can do better, and so they just have wacky ass competitions about that. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could you could go all over the world and find interesting cultures. Um, but I think I think the uh, my favorites recently have. I mean, the Mongols will always be in there, like the Huns and the Mongols. Um. The uh, of the uh, because I'm like my whole family's German. The ancient Germans I find really interesting, and the Celts, um, which I guess are kind of big names, but they're uh, we're finding more and more out about them like on a year-to-year -year basis. So especially it's, old Germanic, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So how I about like you? That. So, um, of course, I wouldn't take past cultures as a whole because there's flaws and. Almost every one of them. I mean, like, I'm not going to go into someone's house, fuck their wife, and then steal their belongings, you know? <laughs> um, I, that's just not my jam. But uh, a sense of almost, just like you said, they were more thankful for life, even. Um, they were, you know, the sun on their face was a blessing each day. I think that's something that people just don't have anymore. Uh, they don't value hard work, either. They don't value doing something with your hands, actually creating something, actually doing something, right? I mean, everybody in the fitness industry has a little bit of it because we have this, you know, uh, sense of uh, competitiveness and rivalry and stuff like that, and we always push ourselves. That's something that everybody in the fitness industry or everybody in the fitness clique does, I think, even if they are, uh, you know, doing CrossFit or something. But, you know, it, when it comes down to it, um, I think that that sense of just, just almost like a simpler view of life, a more simplistic view of life, I think is something that everybody can, can kind of pull from past cultures. Also, um, I know I'm not usually the person to bring this up, uh, Jamie is, but, uh, people are so damn close minded about sex. Um, yes. In, in cultures past, that just wasn't a goddamn issue. It just wasn't. Like, no, I, 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 you will not see in another in a, in a non-Judeo-Christian culture, one, this whole binary gender thing, which I swear to fucking God, the people on Facebook are driving me fucking nuts lately. Like, basically, if you voted for Trump, I just want to rip your fucking throat out. Because those are some of the most willfully ignorant people I've ever encountered. But they think that they're like... They, they conflate sex and gender, and then they just insist that it's a fact. It is fucking not. It's science. And, like, almost every other culture on the fucking planet 
has had at least three genders up until Christianity. And then everybody's like, it's a boy or a girl, and a boy or a girl sticks his penis in the girl's vagina, the end. It's like, all right, get your fucking banjo out because you can't fuck for shit. So I'll bang your girl, and you can go on and tell that story down the street. Well, it's not even that. It's, it's you know, people are afraid of doggy style. You know, it's like missionary on the lights off. Yeah, there's there's still some, some people out there like uh, you'll see that in um, uh, certain religions. On Reddit, there, on Hasidic, Reddit, I'm sure. Hasidic Jews actually have to fuck through a hole in cloth, or they used to have to. Uh, yeah, I've heard of that. You had to hold a sheet up. Right. Or whatever. Right. And it was yeah, just I all... Just, I just don't get that. I think, uh, actually, I have turned that into a, like, a, it was an idea for, like, a, like sort of a, not a really a role play thing, but um, I thought about doing it in the bedroom as, like, a kind of glory hole type situation. So you oh, just yeah. make it, like, so you just make it, like, completely impersonal, just, like, rape into the, your partner's mouth or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but... It seemed like a lot of work, and I'd rather just go to an actual glory hole and do it. So, and uh, people, which I've never actually done, but it is definitely on my list of things to do. There's a place called B and A that's in Jersey that uh, is you can either fuck in a room, uh, and we've considered doing this on uh, very many Saturdays. Like, gotten halfway to the car, and one of us has been like, "Yeah, I don't know," but you can either fuck in a room in, in front of a whole bunch of people. So, like, couples just fuck on, like, platforms in front of a lot of guys who are jerking off. Okay. A lot of, like, creepy old men. Uh, <laughs> or, you can, or you can go to a glory hole, um, that, which I think would just be entertaining for a Saturday Especially night. Especially they're paying to be a fly on the wall. Yeah, that's, that's not new. Um, but this is, like, actually... an old-school, like, filthy fucking sex shop thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I, more power to you. I mean, people people are just so close minded to it, and they rob themselves of experiences that I think that they um, they would be it would be beneficial towards their. Yeah, sex you life might enjoy it, and you might not, but you never know unless you try. Um, the other thing I like about the diet of people past is they had a lot more fruits and fucking vegetables, a lot more whole foods, a lot more less processed shit, and I think that. Um, they were less prone to not necessarily diseases, but colds um, and stuff like that. So I think that's something we can kind of take away. Uh, also, hunt, kill, cook is something that I think people could could benefit from. Although I, of course, can't. Uh, I was, of course, shocked like everybody else and traumatized as a kid by watching Bambi's mother get shot. But... <laughs> Um, and Simba dying, or Simba's dad dying in Lion King and uh, Land Before Time. I'm not here, but I'll always be around. So, I can't really kill animals, but, um, but, uh, even if you have to go to the grocery store and, like, make it an event, you know, go and, like we talked about in the previous podcast, uh, go out and grill it on, on, do, do something very primal. Something very primal is missing from our society nowadays. Yeah, uh, and... Really, like like you were just saying, grill it. Uh, like uh, just the use of flame in making your food is. I think it's a it's a critical component that a lot of people are missing out on. And quite frankly, food tastes better when it's fucking grilled. And I will at this point, I'll grill any goddamn thing. I even grilled biscuits one day, just to see what. It, what it, like I, I just had a tin of uh, Grand's biscuits and I grilled them. And okay, that sounds like something southern. You can't give me shit anymore. Grilled biscuits. That sounds exactly southern. Don't. Does it? Give me shit. Yes. Grilled biscuits. That just has a southern twang to it. Well, I mean, I, I was fucking my sister while I was doing it, so I guess it all works. Hey, multitasking. It's important yeah. in life. Um, but, y I, yeah. I, I mean, I've never had sex with my sister. Let's just... They can last... tell it's a joke, and if they can't, they're pretty much a Redditor, okay? That's true. So I wonder what percentage of our listeners are Redditors. And if I wonder you're a redditor, how often please they punch themselves below. in the face for it. If you're a redditor, please comment below. Uh, also, yes. tell us your views on uh, everything scientific, and, and we'll just um, go over it, maybe. Yeah, oh, tell us what subreddit you're in, too, because uh, yeah. I know our weight room used to be a big fan of me, but now they just, they uh, anytime somebody will post one of my articles, they just lock the shit out of it and push it to the bottom. And you know, guys, and something that you can... Before. Oh, yeah, it's something that you can do to help us out, you know, if you really want this, uh, our message to be spread, and if you really do 
support Jamie Lewis and Chaos and Pain and everything, you will share this on your social media. Although we don't personally use Instagram that much or Reddit or anything else, any exposure helps and it would be very appreciated and hopefully we can start uh, calling out some of the bullshit um, so that people can see. People can yeah, be, that'd be fun. And we uh, we do appreciate our fans. And oh, yeah. I will be I will be coming up with uh, some way to thank fans. I'm still trying to uh, work out the details, but um, and it's coming. The, you know what's funny is in order to have a Patreon, you really need money to start so that you can do the like the thank yous. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, but I'm getting it all worked out. Uh, but I culture's past. Um. You know, there, there's a lot of lessons we can learn, but most importantly, uh, I think that um, taking bits and pieces from every different culture and forming your own little way of life is important, too. So, that's something I would encourage. Like, uh, being out in the sun more, for instance. Being outside yep. more is important for people. Uh, one, thing I, uh, one thing that's going into my book that... Um, I I haven't written about on the uh, on the blog, and yes. hopefully nobody steals this idea and runs off with it. Oh no! But uh, I think that a uh, a di a piece of dietary advice that is a good idea is and in in the book I'm calling it um, campaign season uh, versus kind of the off season uh, because you know the the uh, the Vikings and the G Germans and the cults all had a season for raiding and then a season where they like during winter where they were just like hold up in the house fucking and eating meat. And, um, Putting all so the grain had, in a mill. Yep. Yeah, they had very different diets uh, in those two periods of time. And uh, I think that's probably something that humans could stand to get back to, like having a, having a diet and just a lifestyle that is more attuned to the season in which they're living. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because we already kind of have something like that. So, like, people have cravings of, like, a hot chocolate and stuff like that in the winter, right? Or, or something hot, a hot beverage. And then they have uh, cravings for a cool beverage in uh, summer. Do you think that's kind of related, evolutionary? Uh, there is – it's it's basically um, – uh, it's self-medicating uh, – Whatever the fuck that like winter doldrums shit is called. Uh, right. What in the hell is that called? There's a term for it. You mean like that winter depression stuff? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're self medicating for that. Uh, that's that's my uh, that's actually a scientific fact. Um, okay. But I I think that it's also uh, it's probably built into our DNA that I mean ever since we stopped being, uh, you know, a tropical. Uh, well, at least for non-tropical people, um, I think that a shift in diet is basically built into our DNA, and it is it's especially the case for, say, um, uh, American Indians in the Southwest. That's why they have such a high preponderance of obesity, is because they're used to having f periods of feasting and periods of like utter famine, and so they store body fat completely differently than other uh, other ethnicities, and right. um, so they get fat really fucking easily, and the reason is they need it to get them through lean times. Except now there's no lean times, so they're just all running around with type 2 diabetes with their feet falling off every other fucking day. Man, fuck, that was a good question, by the way. Yeah, that I was a great I'm question. Send, I'm going to think I'm going to send that guy some uh, some riot. Some swag? That's yeah, my swag. man. So um, now we can get to back to the stupid ones. Um, this one I'm going to answer real quick because I don't think you want to spend really any much fucking time on it, right? I think it's fucking stupid. How to gauge when you get too fat on a bulk without body fat measurements or a scale. The mirror. So, um... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually about. use the way my clothes fit. Okay. I don't even look in the mirror so much. So, like, it's not, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Like, just fucking, like, you know you're getting too fat usually when you're getting too fat, and then just cut down. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So, uh, 12, the cure for stim dick. Get off stimulants. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, come on, people. Um, I, one... I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, like, get on uh, get on Amazon. And uh, I used to use Rhino 5 um, just for sport fucking. And uh, I, that shit works better than Viagra. Um 
I don't, like, if you just Google rhino pills for men, they keep changing the name because I think what happens is uh, they keep getting <laughs> found to have, like, they, I mean, it probably has Cialis and Viagra and every other kind of fucking thing in there. Because, I mean, this shit, when I say it works better than Viagra, the first time I ever took Rhino 5, which is an old formula that's no longer available, yeah. it, I had to keep waking up and bending my dick because my dick hurt so bad. It was so hard. Oh, no. And it would not go limp. And I was afraid I was going to get priapism and also it kept waking me up because it hurts. So I had to literally use both hands on my dick and bend it in half like I was trying to snap kindling in order to get it to get slightly soften up so I could fall back to sleep. Just, so, uh, just Jamie waking up in the middle of the night. You shall not pass. <laughs> yeah, seriously, man. It was fucking brutal, but uh, uh, like that shit works. So if you're if you're planning on doing some sport fucking and uh, you're having a problem with spit stem deck, Rhino will defeat it. Rhino will defeat just about any kind of penile problem. And you're welcome for that imagery. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, me squat. with a big old Gandalf beard screaming <laughs> at my dick. <laughs> Fuck. Um, okay. Uh, hack squat versus leg press is a variation for lower body training. They both work. Yeah, uh, they both work. Uh, you get shearing stress on your kneecaps from both, so I don't think one is particularly more damaging to your knees than the other. I prefer uh, hack squat. So uh, frankly, for me, leg press is nothing but GPP because it's just loading plates. That's all it is for me. I never get anything out of it otherwise. I get a huge pump on my biceps, and that's it. Um, I uh, I actually have a unique problem where, um, you know, I'm 6'5", and most leg presses, I kind of hit the, the you know, hit the uh, max height. So I really can't use a lot of leg presses, uh, a lot of leg press machines. Um, just because of the range of motion, it's just like I'm, I've got a knee bent at starting position. Um... So I just, I never end up using them. I always use the hack squat. The, hack, the thing I like about hack squat, too, is you can better squeeze your ass, um, your glutes. So I feel that that transfers over to, if you're interested in squatting like I am, um, you know, it transfers better to the actual squat than I think leg press does. Nobody cares about your leg press PR. Um, unless you're like Ronnie Coleman and you've got the entire stack plus two people on the back plus... Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger saying, you got this, Ronnie. And then, like, you know, yeah, nobody cares. Um, but but it, it, I like the hack squat because of that. It, it just, it, in my opinion, it better transfers over to an actual squat. Because you are pushing your body through a range of motion, right? Um, but you can build legs on both. Um, I just don't like the leg press. Simple as that. So... Um, We've run out of questions. Oh, look at that. So, we are done, people. Uh, I know usually we're a lot more long-winded and dragged out than this at the end, but... Hey, you did your level best to slow it down there in the middle. <sighs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, so, we've got... Uh, in this episode, we've got... Uh, we talk about porn... We talk about Rosie O'Donnell being killed. We talk about um, a bunch of other stuff. It was actually a pretty fucking good episode. So, uh, for the last time on this episode, with that being said, <laughs> we will see you guys in the next one. Yep, laters. Oh yes, you're dead.